Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Costco. Why don't you ask someone who works here? Turned out I'm actually the a-hole. This is an old story from about 20 or so years ago. I stopped at Costco on the way home from work. I just came in looking for some electronics or whatnot and so wasn't pushing a cart. And while in the electronics section, this older woman sees me looking over some item and I can see she's interested in an item shelf near the one I'm looking at. I don't even remember what the items were. Anyway, she turns and asks me some very specific question about the item she's looking at. I looked up at her and simply answered sorry, I have no idea. A few minutes later at the other end of the same aisle, this same lady comes up to me with some other item in her hands and asks me, do you know blah 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 about this? Again, it was an item that I had no idea about, and at this point I'm mildly annoyed and just answered, nope, and turned to go browse the next aisle over. It's worthwhile, I think, at this point in the story to explain that I was working in Northern NJ, basically a suburb of NYC, in a fairly stressful job, and one of the reasons I had even stopped at Costco was that my 12-mile ride home was mired in terrible traffic. Rather than spend the next 30 minutes trying to go the last 6 miles home, I pulled into the Costco I was about to crawl past, figuring I'd do a little shopping and let some of the traffic clear out while I did so. So I started this whole experience one a little tightly. On top of that, this was when I was in my early 30s or late 20s, and I was a pretty big D-bag back then, I have mellowed since, and partly due to this experience. Anyway, moving on, five minutes later I'm nerding out over whatever thing I was looking at in the next aisle and the woman comes around the corner from the other aisle where I left her, specifically walking past other customers to come to me to ask a third question about something that I had no idea about. By now, I'm pretty annoyed. It is clear to me that she is not flirting with me or anything like that, and I cannot understand why she keeps coming to bug me about these things when all I want to do is just waste a few minutes out of traffic. In all honesty, if I'd had any answers for her, I would likely have given them to her, but I didn't have those answers. In reply to her question, I gave her a sh asterisk tty look and in a very condescending voice said, I have no idea but maybe you ought to ask someone who works here and made an overly dramatic gesture with my hands, pointing towards one of the employees rounding the corner at the edge of the electronic section about 20 feet away. The woman looked at me, somewhat offended, and didn't say another word. I didn't give a damn. Why couldn't this woman lead me to my nerding out? I left the electronic section and wandered off and after another 20 or so minutes of walking around and just avoiding traffic, picked up some grocery item or other and walked to the cashier line to pay for it. As my turn came up to pay, I pulled out my wallet looking for my membership card and could not find it. I knew I had to show it to get into the store and quickly checked all my pants pockets, no card. The cashier smiles at me and points to my chest. I looked where she was pointing and in a split second, I realized, maybe not for the first time ever, that I was a giant hit hole. So my employer had access control on all buildings and you scan your employee ID card at the door of any of these buildings to enter. Employees were also obliged to display their ID at all times while on work property. Many people wore the badge attached to one of those retractable cords that you clip to your belt, some wore their badge on a loop of ribbon around their neck, and others, like myself, wore their badge in a transparent pouch that was designed to go clip onto a shirt or jacket pocket. My employer also required business attire, so on my way home from work, I was dressed in leather-soled shoes, pleated dress pants, a white button-down shirt, and a tie, left the jacket in the car for the trip into Costco. Apparently, I also left my work ID badge holder still clipped to my shirt pocket. At that point in time, it would not have been unusual for me to go in and out of buildings at work a dozen or more times on any given day. After a year or so, it had become a well-practiced and unthinking motion for me to grab my work ID from the badge holder that held it on my shirt pocket, flash it to the door sensor, and just slip it back into the pocket on the holder as I entered a building. Apparently, when I pulled my Costco ID out of my wallet to get into the store, I unthinkingly placed it in the badge holder, since I'd forgotten to take that off and leave it in my car with my jacket instead of back into my wallet. I had been walking around the store looking like a manager, 
with a badge displaying the Costco logo prominently in bright red letters right on my chest. As all of this realization came to me in the second or two after the cashier pointed out my Costco ID card I was wearing, my face went a little pale and she asked me if I was okay. I mumbled something about feeling dumb and this being a habit from work as I paid for my stuff. I hurried out of the store, hoping I didn't see the woman who had been asking me questions. It began to dawn on me that if I weren't such a d-bag coward, I'd go and find that woman, explain to her what happened, and apologize to her for being so rude. Instead, I just left the store in shame, feeling about two inches tall. The next story is titled Karen Gets Arrested. This happened a while back, but I can't resist posting to Reddit El Mao. I was 14M but 5'11", 6, while wearing shoes. I went to a local grocery store with my parents that let's just call a Mart. It's a huge store, almost like a Walmart, and the employees wear black polo tees, which say, how can I help you? As usual me and my parents, and I entered the store and split up to get our separate groceries. I was picking up some miscellaneous food items like chips, pasta sauce, sausages, etc. I'd found some chips in a flavor that I like but not the brand that I wanted. The current brand's chips would have a weird aftertaste. And so I put the chips back on the shelf. Here's comes a woman in maybe her late 40s or 50s, asking me why the ready-made pizza rolls were so expensive. I told her I didn't know and that I didn't work here. I can kind of see why she thought I was an employee. I was wearing a Black Panther shirt which was mainly black. As soon as I said I didn't work here, she screamed, don't try to fool me I know you work here. Me. While shocked, I don't work here I'm just a 14-year-old getting groceries. A cashier from the front came and asked us what was wrong. Let's refer to the lady as Kay from now. Kay said, this employee assaulted me and refuses to help me. The employee dumbfounded says, he doesn't work here. He then turned to me and asked if I assaulted her. I explained the situation to him and he had a look on his face. Something like I don't want to deal with this sh asterisk t right now. He just tells the lady to calm down then goes back to the registers. The lady then throws a tantrum and runs her hand through the shelves, putting a bunch of food boxes on the ground and breaking several bottles. The cashier called the cops like any sane person would. I just stood there in awe. The cops arrived while she was screaming at me. I don't even remember what she said. We both were made to sit down while they looked through the security footage. Turns out Kay had been shoplifting and was caught putting several items in her handbag. When the cops tried to cuff her she socked on straight to the face and her nose started bleeding. I don't know what happened next because I had gone back to shopping. Cashier told me that she was charged with assault, larceny, I think that's what it's called, and vandalism. Not sure what happened to her. The next story is titled I do not work in this strip club. I have been browsing this sub for a while now, and I can't believe I have never thought to tell you guys the story of how, on my 18th birthday, I was mistaken for an employee at a strip club. It sounds fake, but I promise that it's not. Disclosure, this happened a decade ago. I was the last one to turn 18 in my friends group, so on my 18th birthday we decided to go out and do all the things you can legally do at 18 in the US, buy cigarettes and lottery tickets, and go to a strip club. Before going out, I was on the phone with a friend and I asked her what to wear. She said, dress for a night to remember, and my 18-year-old brain interpreted that as wear a teeny tiny dress. Folks, this thing was skin tight and short, with vertical black and white stripes, like an umpire or a prisoner in an old timey cartoon. So I met up with my friends and they were all dressed much more casually than me. Miss Dress for a Night to Remember was in jeans and a t-shirt if I recall. But whatever, it was my birthday and I was dressed up, it was fine. We went to the strip club and were milling around on the floor, not knowing what to do. We lived in a fairly small college town so the club was small and tacky. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around to a middle-aged woman in all black. I assumed she was a manager. She asked, why aren't you in the dressing room? Then, must have immediately noticed her mistake, because she said, oh, I thought you were a dancer. I'm not sure if I look like one of the women who worked there, or if she wasn't familiar with all of her staff. But either way, that was a lovely introduction to legal adulthood, and I don't think I ever wore that dress again. The next story is titled In Keeping with the Holiday Season. This is an unusual, I don't work here lady story, in that I wasn't actually at a store or place of business when this happened, but with the holidays coming back around, I was reminded of this story from last year. I received a bunch of texts from some random stranger on my cell phone shortly after Thanksgiving. 
When I looked more closely, I realized what they were. Some woman had sent me her unemployment logs and claims. It had all of her personal information, name, social security number, address, where she searched for jobs, and the outcomes for a two-week period that she was claiming. She must have accidentally sent me this information thinking that I was her unemployment claims caseworker. I called her right away, but had a hard time explaining that I was not some scammer and that she in fact initiated the text chain. I told her that I was concerned that she sent me all of this personal information that was intended for her caseworker and also that she might miss her claim deadline because it was sent to me instead of the rightful person. When she finally realized what had happened, she thanked me because it would have been awful if she missed her unemployment checks so close to Christmas. She had a young daughter and she had been out of work for several weeks already and this was her first two weeks that she was allowed to claim, and we hung up. I was getting ready to delete the texts when I thought about her situation. I was a single mom for many years, struggling sometimes, most times actually. I have been unemployed and know how crappy it feels not to be able to buy the necessities, let alone something nice for the kids to enjoy at Christmas. I called her back. It took some convincing that, again, I was not some scammer. You texted me, remember? I have been in your shoes and want to help. I was one of the fortunate ones who was not laid off during the pandemic. Essential worker, building supply, keeping the economy going and all that. I finally convinced her to allow me to Venmo her a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't much but I am hoping it helped her and her daughter. Oh, and then, yes, I deleted her information. After such a crappy year of retail clients complaining, it was nice to help someone who actually appreciated it even if I didn't work for the unemployment office. The next story is titled Got Cussed Out While Loading Groceries Into My Trunk. So, there was about three carts in a parking space across from where I parked in the Walmart parking lot, and I was loading my groceries in the trunk. Lady goes to pull into the space with three carts and stops honks. Waits, honks again, then gets out and shouts at me why won't you just do your effing job? Get these carts out of the way, as she's moving them violently. I tell her, I don't work here, she replied, couldn't tell, how the hell should I know that? You should have done it anyway. I reply, you should pucker up on my puckered parts, cause I don't work here and I didn't put the carts there. Find another spot instead of cussing out a stranger. She replied, I'm going to talk to management. I replied, be my guest. Have never laughed harder than when I drive past the entrance to see the woman standing there with someone who appeared to be a manager, pointing angrily at me. The next story is titled, Sorry. Can't help you with your insurance claim, so stop calling me. Background. I'm in the micro generation between Gen X and Millennials. The Oregon Trail generation, look it up. I'm old enough to know older tech, 5 one slash 4 floppy disk to boot the DOS prompt, anyone, and young enough to be fluent with newer tech, ACA family's tech support, which is how I was finally able to figure out what was going on. It has to do with landline phones. On a landline phone with a dial tone, as soon as you start dialing the number, the system waits for a certain period of time before it takes the numbers you've entered so far and tries to connect your call. If you enter 10 digits, it sees this as the area code followed by the 7-digit number and connects to that number. If you dial at least 7 but less than 10, it assumes you are calling locally within your area code, adds your area code in front, and then uses just the first 7 digits you enter. Example, let's assume your area code is 112. You call 987-654-3210. The system calls 987-654-3210. You call 654-3210. The system adds your area code and calls 112-654-3210. You try to call 123-456-7890, but are too slow. The system takes only the first seven digits you entered adds on your area code, and calls 112-123-4567. Got it? Good. On to the story. About six years ago, I moved to a new state in the US and got a new cell number and a new job. Right away, I kept getting calls from old old people trying to reach a national insurance company. My cell phone would be ringing anywhere from 5-10 times a day. I got so tired of this, I looked up the insurance company's number. My Made up for this post. Number is 123-800-5551. Their number is 800-555-1234. Notice the common 7-digit string. Suddenly these calls are finally starting to make sense. 
When I get these calls, I would just tell them, sorry, I don't work there, and you have the wrong number. 99% of the time, I'd explain their mistake, even give them the right number, and that was it easy enough. But then, there were the people that are the reason for this story, the people in the, you're all just lazy worthless kids generation. One lady wins the prize of just not getting it. Me, hello, this is OP. Angry lady, ow, that's no way to answer the phone. Me, uh, okay. Ow, just okay. That is so rude, yes, she carried out so for a solid two seconds. Now, I need you to tell me where my check is. Me, oh, sorry, I think there is some confusion. This isn't insurance company. You actually called my personal cell phone. If you have a pen and paper handy, I can ow, cutting me off yelling, I know who I called. You just don't want to do your job. You lazy millennials are all the same. You think the world owes you everything. Me, I'm sorry, but like I said, unfortunately, you dialed the wrong number. The number for insurance company is actually real number. And I hang up. Cue SpongeBob narrator with a few moments later. My phone rings. Me, hello, this is OP. Al, ha, I knew you lied. I hit redial and got you again. So are you going to actually do your job this time? I'm just thinking she can't be this crazy, right? Me? Oh, you've hit read out. That just means you called my cell phone again. You need to call the number I gave you to get insurance company. I'm sorry you're having trouble with them, and I hope you are able to get everything worked out, but unfortunately, I don't work there. Al, you're just a lazy millennial, and everyone there is trying to steal my money. My car still isn't fixed, and I'm done. Done. I know, state attorney general, and he will be very interested to know the scam you guys are running. And then the phrase I was sure was fake, and I never thought I'd actually hear. But now, I want to talk to your manager. Get your manager on the phone. Now, I can hear the veins on her forehead throbbing at this point. Me, feel free to call attorney general. But this is an insurance company, so there isn't much he could do. I'm sorry, but unless you are interested in our my actual job services, my boss won't be able to help you either. Good luck. I hang up. I wonder what the attorney general told her. The calls are finally starting to become less frequent as landline phones are dying out. RIP landlines. The next story is titled The Religious Event. Many decades ago, when I was just a young soldier, I was serving overseas in a NATO country. There was a major, once in a century, event coming up in the town I was stationed. As the town expected a large influx of tourists for the event, the town requests any military personnel who spoke both English and the local language to volunteer as guides. I loved this town, it was the first place in my life where I felt home. I spoke the language, I had local friends. I committed that sin of going native in military terms. I felt more local than I did American. Volunteering for this event seemed like the right fit. Cheerfully, I did. In this country, people did not dress non-conservatively in public at the time. They did not eat while walking in public. The influx of tourists was a bit of a shock, especially the Americans in their short shorts, sandals, tank tops. Just not done by the somewhat conservative local standards. Still, I cheerfully answered lots of questions and got a lot of compliments about my English. Um, yeah, I'm an American so, until the Buffazilla appeared. She was 300 pounds to my 125. Just on sight, she terrified me gigantic everything from hair to bright red painted toenails sticking out of her flip-flops. She spied my guide badge and cornered me, yelling, as people always do when they assume you don't understand their language at normal volume she spat, me hungry, where me eat. Wordlessly, I pointed at the McDonald's behind her and the Wendy's down the street. Oh, gosh, thank you so much, she responded in a now chirpy, cheerleader voice. Some of the locals muttered, what the hell was that? I just shrugged and headed to a proper local bar. She scared me way more than the Soviets ever did. The next story is titled Why Would You Call a Neighboring Store? To set the scene, I work at a gas station that is next to a McDonald's. The McDonald's is supposed to be 24 hours like us, but they have been struggling with staffing and have been closed to LOT. Like most of the day, they are driven through only and they close completely at night, but never at the same time. They keep coming out with new schedules, but don't follow them. So anyway, I'm serving some customers at the cash and the phone rings. I answer it, and the man on the other end asks if the McDonald's next door is open. I say that I don't know. He asks why don't I know. 
I replied that I don't work there and he should call them to ask, not the business next door. He then had the audacity to ask me if I could go check for him if they're open. I said no and he asked why not. I told him it was because I was at work doing my job and couldn't just leave. He then got upset and said that he tried calling them, but they weren't picking up. I said, well it sounds like they're closed then, doesn't it? And hung up on him. I had to have this stupid conversation while serving my actual customers who just want to be in and out quickly because it's a convenience store. I STG people are so entitled. It's not my job to go check if the businesses around me are open just because you want a burger at 9 p.m. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.